everybody out there. Um, I'm Tab, in case we haven't met yet. Um, I can't wait until we have an opportunity where we can do this in person, but for now, I guess this is the best we can do. So here we go. So welcome to Art Journaling. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for being here. We are going to go through eight um, good for the soul, single page art journal designs that I have come up with that will hopefully bring some kind of peace and serenity to your life in this crazy time that we are living right now. Uh, my little experiment called art journaling for the soul. Uh, thank you again for being here. I am super, super happy to be sharing uh, these things with you and I hope that you enjoy it. need your gesso um, so we'll be putting that on first you're gonna need a couple of brushes um, first brush is gonna be a round brush so a pointy one and then we'll be doing a big wash over top of our gesso treatment here so you're gonna need some colors you're gonna need um, a coffee or tea brown um, so make sure that you pick out a brown and then whatever color you want your mug to be um, I'm gonna go with my standard teal. I love that um, You're gonna want a white and a black just for like shadows and highlights and You're gonna want to find some pattern paper in your stash um, that you know you uh, Think goes well with the color you've picked with your or for your mug. So um, if you don't have any pattern paper uh, remember you can paint um, another piece of paper and then you can cut it out and it will just be a painted piece of paper instead of a pre-made you know pattern so it it doesn't really matter um, which whichever one of those you would prefer I'm going to be walking you guys through this second uh, art journal page which is based on comforts um, so things that bring you comfort during the season so there's a lot going on in the world right now and there's we have to really hang on tightly to the things that bring us comfort right now and so I just really um, enjoy this time of year I enjoy um, the sounds, the sights, the the feels, you know, of autumn. So, I um, there's just so much to kind of embrace here. So, I wanted to do a page where I express appreciation for the things that comfort me during the season. So, I wanted to come up with a, a page that's dedicated to that. So, in your journal, you'll want to find a blank page, and what we'll be doing in this one is. with our paint palette and we're gonna need basically like a dot of gesso we do not need a whole lot this goes a really long way so um, don't overdo it so I'm gonna get my round brush wet okay and I'm gonna go ahead and take a little of that gesso um, from like the pile I'm just gonna separate it out to the side here and I'm just going to roll my brush around in there so it stays pointy. Okay, so that's really kind of key here. And on my page, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to play. Okay, so I'm just going to make marks and I'm going to let my brush make swoopy kind of lines. And if I were to give you any kind of, um, you know, advice, I would say, you know, what is, what is a part of fall that you really like? What would it, you know, if it's leaves, let's say, let's let's say it's a leaf falling from the tree. What would that, what kind of motion would that make? That's the kind of motion you can make with your brush. What kind of motion would the wind make when it blows, right? So you really, there's no wrong answer here. And so you can make whatever kind of marks that you want. So you can make long, swooping, twirling lines if you want. You can make little bitty marks as well 
and you're going to be able to see your gesso being applied to your page more than you can see mine being applied right now. I mean, if I kind of like maybe let the light hit it in a certain way, you'd be able to see it, but this is the whole idea. We're making a magic um, message kind of thing, so it's almost like we're drawing with disappearing ink, and then we're going to reveal it in a little bit here. So our next part is we're going to take a little bit of our brown that we've chosen for our coffee color. And again, we don't need a whole lot. I'm going to take my, my nice flat brush. I have a one inch brush here. If you have something close to that, it'll work. Um, so I'm going to get that wet first real quick. I'm going to pull some of that brown out from the big pile and I'm going to water that down until it's nice and thin like watercolor. And so with that, I'm gonna just brush this onto my page. And you'll see that the paint starts to stain the paper. And gesso, by the way, is a primer for your paper or for your canvas. And it will basically protect the paper. It is uh, creating a barrier between the paint and the paper. So it will um, kind of resist paint in a way if it's thin enough. So that's why we water the acrylic down so that it's nice and thin so that when we brush it over the page it is sticking to the bare paper but it is kind of sliding off of where the gesso is. And so we can you know kind of keep adding a little water to our paint if it's starting to get thick. So um, as I brush this over my page, and if I now if I rinse my brush off, here's a trick: if I rinse my brush off and kind of get all the extra water off, I can actually use my my brush as kind of like a mop, where I can really start to clean this up and start to kind of um, wipe off the gesso. Okay, so if I kind of wipe my brush off every once in a while I can keep cleaning this gesso off so it will get a little bit brighter every time I go back and sweep a little bit more off Okay, so um, now that my page is dry, I'm going to just pencil in my mug, okay? So my mug isn't gonna take up the whole paper. Um, it's just gonna be like the most important part of the mug, which is basically the opening of the mug to see that there's liquid inside and then just maybe the handle to kind of show that it is a mug. So you can do a tea mug instead of a coffee mug and I'll show you what you can do to make that happen. I actually might do a tea mug today. So um, I basically want my my mug to take up, you know, maybe like um, two thirds of the page. So like a little, well, a little bit more than you know uh, a half, um, and then the handle can kind of be sitting over at the side here. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of play with how that looks. Okay, so I might, don't want to erase too much because my paper is still kind of wet. So the mug opening then would be, you know, up here at the top. And then I might have my coffee or my tea um, level to be kind of like a little bit lower because um, you don't want it all the way up to the rim. Okay, so I'm just going through and kind of giving it a couple of ovals. I'll make this nice and dark so you can kind of see. Actually, I'll just go ahead and do it with Sharpie. So I'm just kind of giving it the opening. This is the edge itself. And then that will go then down the side of the mug. Okay, my liquid. Um, amount is we want it to be lower than the edge of the the mug so I'm just gonna kind of go right down here or so okay so that's as much tea or coffee that we're gonna see 
the handle then can kind of come out the side here and then we can have something like like that going on okay so um, as it kind of twists and curves um, around you can have that little kind of line there so this is then going to get painted so um, I'm going to go ahead and put on my plate the the three colors that are necessary for painting. Um, I, I already have like some gesso, which you can use as white paint if you really want to. Um, but I can also put some white acrylic on there. Um, gesso is actually more opaque than acrylic, so it's kind of nice to use as a white paint color sometimes if you have extra of it and you don't want to divvy out more, more paint. So I'm gonna use my smaller flat brush um, just because there are some small areas here that I wanna make sure that I um, can fit my brush into. So I'm gonna mostly take my blue color here. I'm gonna add a little white to it or gesso, what the heck, um, just to kind of lighten it a little bit so that when I paint this in, it's you know um, got a nice opaqueness to it. If you sometimes, if you, especially if you have like a red or a purple, um, a lot of times those are very transparent. So adding just a little bit of white to it at first will make it opaque, and then you can go over it with pure color, and that will actually, um, you know, kind of um, saturate the color a little bit more. So um, if you paint like a pink mug first, and then go over it with your red, that's actually going to help your red color because. The pink having the white inside of it will block um, the brown from showing through, and then you can take your red over top, and then that should be kind of that underpainting really kind of helps um, the color get a little bit more saturated. So, um, so try that if you have a red or or sometimes purples have trouble as well. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and start painting on my mug, and when you're painting, you want to always follow the contour of your object. You don't want to just paint randomly because then you're, you know, if you do have visible brush strokes and they're not going along the contour of your object, then it's not really helping, okay? So um, whenever you are painting something that's curved, you should be painting in a curved kind of motion. So um, not just straight back and forth. It doesn't help the contour if you are painting um, in directions that don't you know help the the object out okay so um, I can kind of go down the side here kind of straight but then I want to make sure that I'm painting I'm dragging that into the mug um, in that kind of curved motion okay so I'm just gonna kind of get this all filled in and I don't you know this is an art journal I don't care about it being perfect um, if I if I leave a little bit of brown kind of showing through here and I have brush strokes I really don't care I actually enjoy that um, I like being able to look through my art journals and see my process almost. So um, I'm gonna just kind of really carefully get this lip here, but really this doesn't have to be a hard edge. I can just kind of let this kind of go down in here. I can cover my Sharpie up a little bit. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, but I probably do want to put some kind of shadow in this back, you know, this back rim um, inside my mug here. So I will come back in with a little bit darker of a color in a second here. Especially because of this edge right here. Okay, so this edge is gonna require us to be a little bit darker so that we can actually see that. So that's when I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna get like the, let me see if I can show it on the camera, the tiniest bit on the corner of my brush because I black is very powerful, okay, it's gonna it's going to totally change your color right away, as you can kind of see. Um, so we don't want it to go too dark too fast, so we just get a little speck of it at a time. And then now I have that nice little shadow so that I don't have the same color right up next to each other. Okay, so I could even go a little bit more intense with that just to kind of really punch it. Okay, so I just want to get a little bit of shadow going on on the inside of my mug. And then I'll rinse and I'll do a little bit of a highlight. Okay, and I can use my um, my round brush too if there's a, a, tight, a tight spot that you are having a hard time getting into. 
So like right here, if I wanted to really exaggerate that that highlight versus shadow difference here, um, I'm just gonna round this around and keep that highlight on that top rim. Okay, and I can make the top rim and the back be highlighted as well, but I really wanna show the difference between this lip being in front and then this being the inside of the, the mug here, okay? So same kind of treatment on the handle. So again, I'm gonna take my, my lighter stuff and I'm gonna keep it kind of on the edge. I'll take my regular turquoise. I'll have to get some more here. Ooh. Ooh, a little slimy there. Okay. And then I'm going to get my regular turquoise down the handle here. But now I have to decide where are the shadows and where are the highlights supposed to be. Okay. So I probably want to have a shadow right next to the mug itself. And then I probably want to have a shadow underneath of the handle where it kind of twists and turns. So a couple places I need to have a shadow. So as you're switching between shadow and highlight colors, just make sure you're rinsing your brush out because there's nothing worse than getting like muddy colors because you're going from adding black to then adding white to then and so you're basically going to have a whole bunch of just tones, which is with gray. So if you really want to have a nice bright highlight and a really dark shadow, you got to rinse your brush in between. So if I want to create a nice new shadow, I have to get a fresh brush, add my specks of black at a time, right, until I get the right shade. And then I'm going to go in here right next to my mug and I'm going to get that nice and dark right next to the mug. Okay, so I want to see that difference again. If it's not enough of a difference, you can punch it either darker on the handle or I can punch it lighter on the mug. So I just wanted, you know, this, this to be somewhat um, helpful, I guess, in if you're trying to learn how to paint. Um, I thought it would be nice to, in these workshops, just kind of almost make it into a little painting lesson. I'm just going to punch up the highlight right on my mug just a little bit because I do want that contrast to be there. So handle versus mug body, right? So I just want to make sure that that contrast is there. So the tea, the coffee, whatever is kind of already set up because it's the coffee color of the background, which is kind of kind of handy um, but if you wanted to punch it up a little bit like let's say that you know you really wanted to, your tea to be nice and dark or your coffee to be nice and dark you can add you know your black to your brown and make a nice dark coffee or tea um, it's kind of up to you what you want that to feel like um, but we do want to go in there and fill in our liquid with something so it's not the exact brown of the background if I am doing like let's say I stirred a little milk into my tea I can uh, you know add a little bit of white right on top while it's still wet and just kind of get a little creaminess in there so it's kind of up to you however you want your your tea or your coffee to look next step which is now we're gonna cut out little strips of paper and then write on them all of the things that comfort us during this time so I'm going to be cutting this paper. I'm going to set my journal on the side here to dry. And I'm going to cut this pink paper just because I like the pink popping, you know, from the, um, the blue of the mug. So I'm just going to cut these thin little strips. And I'm going to write pretty tiny all of the things that I love about fall. I'm going to take my little sharpie and I'm just going to start writing.
Okay, so I've got all of my little um, favorite things about fall written on my little strips of paper. I have my journal page, it's nice and dry. I just blow dried it, so that is ready to go. And now we just need our Mod Podge. So we'll get our Mod Podge out and um, your glue brush that you've designated as your ugly brush for all of uh, your art journal pages. So um, we'll just go ahead and Mod Podge on our little pieces of paper. Okay, so remember that just because it's your ugly brush doesn't mean you can't treat it right every once in a while, so make sure you get it wet first because otherwise it'll be trashed in no time. Um, and I like to keep my ugly brushes around for at least a couple of years before they're totally toast. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of, uh, you know, plan this out a little bit. Okay, so I just kind of want this to almost be like almost like ingredients that I'm throwing into my comforting uh, cup of tea here. Uh, so I just kind of want to arrange them in a way where it looks like they're kind of heading towards like being inserted into the, the tea here. So that's kind of why I have them kind of like directed towards the, the opening of the tea mug. So um, I might want to come up with one more, but Here's the thing that you can do if you want to have a cup of tea instead of just a cup of coffee. So what I would do is just take the same either painted paper if you made paint, painted paper or take uh, your pattern paper and you're going to want to cut out a rectangle that is a reasonable size compared to your, your, your mug. Okay, so you know something that's not too big, not too small, not going to take up a whole ton of space. And then, you know, you want to cut it into a rectangle, but then, or a square, but then you'll want to like cut off the two top corners so that it looks like a T tag, right? And then what we can do with our Sharpie is we can connect it and have the string kind of go over the rim of the, the mug into it. So um, you can kind of place that wherever you think it would look best, right? So. If you want to do any lettering on top of this, you sure can. Um, I probably will, just you know, in my detail part of the end of this. So what I want to do now is get my brush um, in my Mod Podge, and I want to start, you know, getting these strips of paper on there. So again, the process is Mod Podge on your paper, set your uh, attachment down, get it in the right spot. <laughs> just want that to overlap there a little bit, and then seal over it with more Mod Podge. Okay, and so now I'm just going to go through and do my thing with my Sharpie, and if you have a white gel pen, by the way, um, they're really nice to have. Um, my favorite is the Signo, the Uniball Signo, and it comes in a 1.0 um, width, and so it's just nice and bold, and uh, it flows really nicely. So if you happen to see one of those at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or a Dick Blick store somewhere, pick one up because they're really great to do little fun um, detail highlight work. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with some of this stuff and fixing my outlining and then I'm just going to do my thing and uh, judge it up, you know, with all my details. So here we go. 